I noticed the narrative tone of this book is fantastic. And actually, the reader oh, of the book, um, Daniel Bittner, he yeah. sounds like a young Casey Kasem, actually. <laughs> I was trying to, like, I was trying to, like, find what, what's going on with this voice that I'm hearing. But it was, he's totally a young Casey Kasem. Um, as an author, what advice do you have for people looking to author a book? Have you leveraged editors or co-writers to help with the documenting process and I imagine when you first set out, you weren't like, I'm going to write a book about this. How did that kind of take place? And what, what advice do you have for people? And also out of curiosity, how is, uh, how is your writing going? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, my writing right now is not going great, to be honest with you. COVID is not a good scenario for me for writing uh, because I have kids and um, well, I'll just let you fill in the gaps of uh, what, what you might imagine it takes to write. Uh, yeah, I have kids as well. I can understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I have written, uh, I'm, I'm trying to write a science fiction book right now. And I don't know if it'll ever get to the point where anyone else should, should read it. Um, but it, it would be sort of cruel and unusual punishment at the moment to read my draft. But I do have a draft of it. And, um, and actually, the, you know, it, it, it may sound sort of silly that I'm writing a, a novel because that's not really the no, talent that amazing. I have. But yeah. um, but it's the second time that I've done this. And the other one is also would be cruel and unusual punishment to make anyone read it. But um, but I did that before writing Sprint. Uh, I started off with NaNoWriMo, the National uh, Novel Writing Month, which is November every year. So you've just missed it. But like basically the premise is, you the, people around the country participate in this and you try to write 50,000 words in wow. November. So it's like 1500 words a day. And yeah. the idea is you, it's sort of like a sprint really. I mean, the idea is like you have yep. this forcing function, this time box and you've kind of got to rush through and, and do it. And it forces you to stop saying I'll do that someday and to do it like right now. And I just read a post by uh, an author who I admire, uh, Julie Zhu who said that she had written several uh, novels in NaNoWriMo and none, nobody's ever, she says, nobody's ever read any of them, but it was for her the perfect preparation for writing, becoming a writer herself. And she has a, a really successful blog and newsletter and she wrote a best-selling book called Making of a Manager, uh, which I highly recommend. And it's, uh, it, it certainly was the case for me that writing I did not finish my book in, in NaNoWriMo. In fact, it took me years and years and years to finish it. And I rewrote it tons of times. And it still wasn't amazing in the end. But it was such a great experience for practicing writing and practicing writing a lot of stuff. And it so happened that after I had, by the time I, I got to the point with the design sprint where I thought this is worth sharing. And the first thing I did with it was to write blog posts about it but I felt a lot more comfortable with writing because I had been writing as a hobby for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's my first piece of advice to aspiring writers is to write something that's exciting to you. And, and even if you don't show it to people, I, I just think the, if you can be excited enough to keep after it and keep doing it, there's, you know, there's no way you're going to lose by practicing writing. I only wish I had started doing it sooner because I was interested in it back to being a kid but I just mm -hmm. told myself, like, I'm not good at it. Uh, you know, I decided in oh. college that I wasn't good at it. I didn't have a growth mindset, you know. Like, I looked at what I was writing at the time and thought, isn't that good? And didn't realize, like, yeah, it takes a lot of practice. takes a lot of work to make uh, writing good. The writing that you read uh, has been through people. Those folks have practiced writing for years. They're talking about a subject maybe that they've been doing for years if it's nonfiction or if it's fiction you know they've been they've written a ton of stuff you haven't seen this is draft you know whatever of the thing and um, and they, they've had an editor they've had an agent probably who's worked on it so many people have worked on it before it gets to that point and if you compare yourself to those yeah. things then you're going to come up short and I didn't realize that you know and I wish I had so just write 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 if, if you're interested in writing like you need a lot of reps to um, yeah. I needed a lot of reps just to write a nonfiction book, which is, you know, the bar for writing quality for nonfiction. It's not as high, but, um, but that helped me a lot. Uh, when I did start writing, I, I, I did benefit from writing with my, um, my colleagues. I wrote with uh, John Zeratsky, Braden Coetz, and also involved the other folks on, on our team as well. Um, and, you know, I, I think that you need to have somebody and it doesn't have to be a co-author, but, 
somebody who can look at your writing and really like give you really feedback that you listen to somebody who can see the potential in your ideas, but will also be blunt with you. Actually, my wife is my most important editor for that. She looks at everything. She looked at everything in Sprint before I would even show it to my co-authors. I would show it to her. And, you know, it's, it's that, that's really crucial. So finding that, that person you can rely on. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested in blogging, like one approach we used to have was uh, coming up on our, on our design team, we would come up with a list of like potential topics. And mm-hmm. then we would choose a topic, a couple topics maybe we're interested in. And we would bounce that off each other. Like, which one of these do you think is the most interesting worth writing? And, and then, you know, maybe instead of having to write the whole blog post, our, our deal with each other that we developed was I'll just, I'll write like a few bullet points of like an outline of what I'm going to write. And then I'll Mm -hmm. ask you for feedback. It just, it goes back to that David Allen idea of like breaking things down into smaller tasks. That's key for me with writing too, is to break it down into a smaller piece. And if I'm working on my novel, you know, my, my goal is usually like, okay, I'm just gonna write 1500 more words, you know, or I'm going to reread like, you know, two chapters of the first draft today. Like that's a tractable thing. Whereas like write a first draft of a novel as like the thing on your to-do list. It's going (laughs) to crush your soul. right? (laughs) Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Zooming in and out on the tasks is such a good plan. And also, uh, which I heard a long time ago, I don't even know where, but kind of giving yourself, what do I need to accomplish today? to have been happy with the day, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like, what's totally. the minimum amount you could check off? I think that the goal always for me with writing is to, you know, if there's something that you feel like you, you understand really well and you imagine you're explaining that thing to your friend, you know, that the writing should sound like that. It should sound like a, f- a friend who understands this thing and is mm. a person who you'd like to talk to is, is telling you about it and is, you know, explaining to you, not in a condescending way. They're not mansplaining it to you. They're just sort of like, <laughs> Hey, like you're, here's what's going on. Or like, isn't this interesting? You know, and they're, they're genuinely interested in the topic. They're like, isn't this kind of cool? And yeah. if you, you know, if you read like to me, like one of the gold standards for this is Malcolm Gladwell. So whatever you think no. of Malcolm Gladwell's writing, like he's really good at this. You know, he is, he tells the story, he is also present in telling you the story and he's there. So I'm like, Oh my God, isn't this interesting? You know, right. like, but what about this? And I think that that's, it doesn't have to be in the style of Malcolm Gladwell, but good writing usually has that, like it's, it, it ex, it's explaining clearly to you what's going on. And that's true for fiction and nonfiction. It's actually very difficult to do. <laughs> and even when you know the thing that you're describing, it's actually very hard to just speak in plain language about the mm-hmm. thing and convey your enthusiasm and explain it in a way that's very respectful of the reader and, and also um, compassionate of where the reader's at and, and right. compassionate about their attention and, you know, like all those things. It's, it's hard to do that. It's a very simple idea that's, that's hard totally. to do and sort of takes endless work to, you know, I'll, I'll never master that, but yeah, that's we, the goal. Yeah. we always tell well, it to I mean, our design students, you know, it's like anyone, yeah. well, almost anyone can take something simple and make it complex and hard to understand, (laughs) but it takes a genius to take something complex and make it simple. Yeah. Totally. It's a huge conundrum because you want to give something complex, but you have to explain it in really simple terms. So it's, it is really hard to break those two things down. Well, you kind of broke my last question here, which was about, (laughs) uh, you brought up in the book, which I love the wordage, which was curiosity mindset instead of growth mindset. Um, and I was like, oh, I like where he's going with curiosity <laughs> mindset, because I actually think that's more spot on than even growth mindset, you know, and, and when you're telling somebody to look at the capability of looking at nuance, whether it be in interactions with other people or life itself, and then find wonder in it, I think curiosity wi- mindset is amazing for it. Um, based on your career and intention, it sounds like writing and going to science fiction and fiction writing is one of those areas, but are there other areas that you're currently investigating and curious about? Yeah. I'm super curious about this, this working over video thing. You know, it's, that's fascinating to me. It's, uh, it's surprisingly fascinating to me because I worked in this like topic many, many years ago when I was at Google, I worked on what is now Google meet. Uh, and it will, you know, and we were thinking about, online whiteboards and, you know, how do you share documents and, and what are the right ways to, you know, to raise your hand or like, well, all these things like this that, um, 
that you have to consider with that stuff. But it sort of felt like, well, you know, I've done that. Like that was sort of in the past. And, and I found that during this time, like my, my intrigue in that has rekindled, you know, partly it's that, it's that part of me that gets aggravated when things don't work the way I want them to. And, and, you know, it's, it's just like, it's a really hard challenge to figure out how to, how to make work happen well over, over software. But what's really exciting about it is that you software introduces the possibility of a framework and, you know, a framework on work is kind of what my whole thing is. Like that's kind <laughs> yeah. of what I've, I've gotten into over the last uh, decade plus. Yeah. So the possibility of, of, you know, giving people an easy on-ramp onto the right framework to do whatever work they have to do at that time together, I think is super interesting. And, and uh, I'm not someone who really like just enjoys like thinking about technology for technology's sake. I have like my bar for it is like pretty high. I have to get pretty excited, but this is sort of like past the bar where I'm like, oh, this is kind of fascinating. Like I really, um, I really can't stop thinking about it now. 